The question I get asked the most on my YouTube channel is why don't we get air to air heat pump or pumps multiple? Why did we go for an air to water heat pump? And I keep getting asked to weigh in on this discussion, this debate when I've done my research and I've made a decision, but I wanna just show you some of the things that I found along the way. Now, I'm not the first to do this. Plenty of other people have debated this and done their own research and analysis. And as you can see, there's other people out there who chose to go the other route as well. I highly recommend, especially Tim's video, is really well structured and actually a bit of plagiarism going on here because I've copied a little bit of his structure but ultimately I did the same sort of analysis and research but I decided that air to water was the best solution for us and he decided air to air was the best solution for him. I believe both are excellent implementations of ultimately the same technology and sooner or later every single one of us every person watching this video we won't have our gas boilers and we'll either have air to air or air to water in our homes so i want to start with the advantages of air to air uh, the big one is traditionally we might have called that air conditioning and so we know that it's able to do cooling typically it's quicker to install compared to air to water just depending on your house and your setup and whatever it could be for a small house just one day of installation it could be two maybe three at most um, it's an inherently very efficient system so the air to water systems can be quite susceptible to the correct in design and installation and configuration and everything else whereas air to air just seems to work and is always efficient it means you can free up wall space by removing radiators. It's very responsive. So if you're not home for a lot of the time or you only use one or two rooms, then air to air could be ideally suited for you. You can run it just like a gas boiler. And in fact, an air to air system is even more responsive than a gas boiler. You can switch it on and it can heat up a room incredibly quickly. And so you don't need to leave it running for a long time. Zone in, that kind of comes off the back of quick response. It means that you could just heat a bedroom or just the living room and you don't have to use any energy heating the rest of the home if that's what you want to do. And sometimes it's cheaper, especially if we took away the government grant, air to air heat pumps would be a lot cheaper than air to water heat pumps. So what are the disadvantages? Well, there's no hot water for most air to air systems. There are now some coming onto the market. Um, big core drilling holes, depending on the size that you're going for, you'll see that they will have like a four inch core drilling piece that they'll be going through. Not every single room, depends exactly on your setup. But if you're having a whole house air to air system, they will be put in big four inch holes in most of your rooms, I'd imagine. There's little to no COP measurement and the data is not as easily accessible as it is for the air to water heat pumps. The units are wall mounted, typically at high level. That could be a disadvantage for you. It may not be. Uh, some people say that it draws your eye a little bit because it's at a higher level and because we're kind of pre-programmed and used to radiators being on the wall. I don't really buy into that argument myself, but some people seem really upset by that. There's the potential that you may have a lot of external ducting and maybe even multiple uh, heat pump units outside. Indoor noise. Now, this one's a debatable one. Some people say they don't notice the noise from air to air. Some people do. Some people are more sensitive. Some people are less sensitive. There's also the argument that you just get used to whatever background noise is there. So this may be an issue for you or not. I've put it on the list just in case you're hypersensitive and that is something you want to um, consider. There's, of course, no grant funding. And so that can mean that air-to-air -air systems will become more expensive than an air-to-water uh, than an air-to-water heat pump, at least to the end homeowner. And then you're heated through convection heating, which is uh, it's kind of well understood that this isn't the most comfortable way to be heated. The more air that you're moving, the less comfortable things will be for us as human beings, the way that we perceive heat and the way that our skin works. Okay, so let's get on to air to water advantages. You can see there's 
the the list isn't quite as long. So why did I choose air to water? Of course, there's hot water integrated by default. All air to water systems do that very easy, very naturally. There's the comfort of the low and slow heating method. It builds up the thermal mass in your property and you find that things just don't feel cold anymore. You won't have a cold leather sofa, for example. Everything just gently soaks up all of that heat energy. You get pretty good data uh, just straight out of the box with any of the manufacturers apps or some of them have web portals and uh, you can export things as CSV and all sorts of different various types of measurements of course there's now like open energy monitor heat the heatpumpmonitor.org website and there's independent monitoring as well so you can get very very accurate data if you want it plugs into your existing system now for a lot of people some people might say this is a disadvantage but as i saw with my system the only difficult bit in our installation was adding two new radiators in a part of the house where there was there was no plumbing and there was no pipe work to go there. The rest of the system, it plugged in really simply, really easily. And of course, the grant funding, it meant that uh, for a lot of people, air to water will work out more cost effective. So what are the disadvantages? Of course, there's no cooling. I know that one's up for debate, but even if you enable cooling on your air to water uh, system, unless you have some sort of fans on your radiators, then it, it's just not going to be effective. Some people argue that with an uh, underfloor heating system, you can get quite significant cooling effects through the slab and through the pipe work there. But ultimately, you're never going to get a system like air to air cools. That's just in another league compared to what air to water can manage. Um, longer installation times is more complex, more involved, typically speaking. And uh, the zoning is discouraged. So typically what you want to do, at least to run efficiently, is heat the whole property. You don't want to just be heating one room or even just heating downstairs or just upstairs to make your system the most efficient and to have the, the recommended system volume of water being circulated, you want to heat the whole property at the same time. The responsiveness is very, very slow. Again, this is only if you want to run it efficiently and this is what we're talking about really. If you want it to be efficient, then you won't zone and you'll keep it on a very slow response. You can actually ramp these heat pumps up and they can heat your place just like a boiler but it's not going to be efficient and it's going to cost you financially as well. And grant funding, of course. Um, let's have a little look here then. Um, comparison table. This is an interesting one. As I started to put this together, I didn't realise until afterwards. As I tallied all of this up, you can see the pros and the cons. We've got on the left-hand side here, air-to-air -air pros, air-to-air -air cons, air-to-water pros, air-to-water cons. So cooling, the air-to-air -air wins that. Installation, air-to-air -air wins that. Efficiency, that's a tie. They can both be equally efficient. Hot water, air-to-water wins that one. Responsiveness, air-to-air -air wins that one. Comfort, air-to-water wins. Data, air-to-water wins. Noise, air to water wins that one and then zoning air to air wins that so it's five four five four that means that there's five pros for air to air and air to water and four cons for air to air and air to water which seems like a happy coincidence because what tipped the balance for us why did i choose air to water if they're so tight the top three reasons for us is that we're a busy family home and so it's quite consistent i do work from home but it and the, you know the kids are home for a lot of the time we need to heat the vast majority of the house for a lot of the time so zoning isn't really an issue it doesn't really matter to us the cost when i got some quotes air to water and air to air were very similarly priced for us but the air to water quotes included hot water generation as well whereas the air to air quotes didn't so once we compare like for like, the air to water system actually was considerably cheaper, um, two to three thousand pounds cheaper at the end of the day after the grant uh, and the grant increased during our process and everything else. But so it, we we're saving money and it's a more comfortable environment for a busy family home. And potentially, 
because we stuck with radiators even though we upsized them maybe less upheaval i'm not really sure about that but i don't know it, it depends on your perspective and look at things why ultimately the point of this video is i need to we need to stop this tribalism in the comments and attacking each other i think every heat pump is a good efficient solution and different homes will require different solutions especially if you've got quite a small property air to water heat pump may not fit the bill at all because they just don't modulate down low enough they don't make units small enough whereas air to air units they do modulate very low and they make very small units that can be easily wall mounted they can be implemented more easily in flats and places like that um, also potentially very very large properties where you might not want to be heating a huge huge volume for a long time then air to air could work really well just in the few rooms that you want to heat most regularly you know a kitchen area and a dining and a living room area and then maybe a bedroom and so you could just heat a, a handful of rooms so there is implementation for both i think a lot of the middle size medium size family homes that are occupied for a lot of the time or maybe someone who's retired or disabled and spending a lot of time at home something like that then i think air to water could be a really good solution but either way i think everyone we should be saying no to gas boilers because they are the biggest polluters here by a long, long way. And then electric boilers, they are the most expensive here by a long, long way. And then infrared panels because they're just snakeskin oil. And yes, you will get a little bit uh, better efficiency from infrared panels compared to electric boilers. But ultimately, the difference between them is pretty marginal. And the only savings really with infrared panels is because you're zoning and you're only heating a small portion of the property. Either way, any heat pump is better than any of these solutions. So if you want to have some tribalism, don't don't fight against heat pumps. That's like brother against brother. Let's let's go to war with the uh, with the rest of the world. Okay. Um, anyway, that's probably not a message I should be sharing. Ninety nine percent of you won't like the video and won't comment, and over ninety six percent of you aren't even subscribed to the channel. So what are you doing? Get on with it. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Another one is coming very shortly. And if you like this kind of content, there's going to be a lot more of it in the next few weeks. Goodbye for now.